Dantil, a very skilled businessman, lived in a city named Vardaman. The king was aware of his abilities, due to which he made him the administrator of the kingdom. With his clever ways, Merchant Dantil kept the king and the common man very happy. After some time, businessman Dantil fixed the marriage of his daughter. On this occasion, he organized a huge feast. In this banquet, he invited everyone from the royal family to the subjects. A servant of the royal family, who used to sweep the palace, also attended this banquet, but by mistake, he sat on a chair which was kept only for the royal family. Seeing the servant sitting on that chair, businessman Dantil gets angry and scolds the servant and drives him away from there. The servant feels very embarrassed and vows to teach the merchant Dantil a lesson. The very next day, the servant is sweeping the king's room. Seeing the king half asleep, he starts muttering. He says, This businessman Dantil has so much courage that he misbehaves with the queen. Hearing this, the king wakes up and asks the servant, Is this really true? Have you seen merchant Dantil misbehaving? The servant immediately holds the king's feet and says, Forgive me. I could not sleep last night. I was muttering something because I was not able to sleep. Hearing this, the king does not say anything to the servant, but a doubt arises in his mind. From that very day, the king bans the merchant Dantil from roaming freely in the palace and reduces his rights. The next day, when the merchant Dantil comes to the palace, he is stopped by the sentries. Seeing this businessman, Dantil is very surprised. Then the servant standing there says with amusement, Hey, sentries, don't you know who they are? They are very influential people who can even throw you out, just like they did with me during the banquet. Be a little careful. Stay. On hearing this, businessman Dantil understands the whole matter. He apologizes to the servant and invites the servant to his house for dinner. The businessman welcomes Dantil's servant a lot. Then he humbly apologizes for the insult done on the feast day and says that whatever he did was wrong. The servant is very happy and says to the merchant Dantil, Don't worry, I will definitely get you back your lost honor from the king. The next day, while sweeping the king's chamber, the servant again starts muttering, Oh my God, our king is so foolish that he eats cucumbers in the bathroom. Hearing this, the king gets angry and says, Fool, how dare you? If you had not been my room servant, I would have fired you. The servant then falls at the king's feet and swears never to grumble again. The king also thinks that if he can say so many wrong things about me, then he must have spoken wrong about the merchant Dantel also. The king thinks that he punished the merchant Dantel unnecessarily. The very next day, the king restores the merchant Dantel to his lost prestige in the palace. Lesson Whether the person is big or small, we should treat everyone with equal respect. After hearing this story from Damanak, Sanjivak said, Okay, I will do whatever you say. Then Damanak took him along and came to Pinglak, said, Maharaj, I have brought Sanjivak. Sanjivak also greeted Pinglak and sat nearby. Pinglak placed his right hand on the Sanjivak bull and asked, Where have you come from in this forest? Do you live well here? Sanjivak narrated his entire story to him. After listening to his story, Pinglak told him to roam fearlessly in this forest protected by me. After this, Pinglak handed over the governance of his forest to the new ministers Kartak and Damanak and himself started living happily with Sanjivak. Within a few days, Sanjivak, with the influence of his wisdom, freed the wild Pinglak from his violent habits and inculcated him in rural religion. Pinglak also started taking interest in his words. His instinct of violence ended. He no longer allowed deers and other animals to come near him. He also kept Kartak and Damanak at a distance. The result was that the small animals, which used to feed on food, 
left over from the lion's hunt, became distraught with hunger. Kartak, Damanak, and other animals started worrying about this situation. They started thinking that when the snake wrapped around the neck of Lord Shankar wants to swallow the rat, the vehicle of Ganesha, when the peacock, the vehicle of Kartikeya, wants to eat the snake of Shankarji, when the lion, the vehicle of Parvati, wants to eat the peacock which kills the snake, then why this drama of non-violence? Damanak said to Kartak, Hey brother, now Pinglak and Sanjivak have become such a close friend that Pinglak has turned away from us. Many of our friends also ran away. We must explain to the king. It is the duty of a minister to explain to the king at the right time. It is the duty of a minister to explain to the king at the right time. Kartak said, You are the one who started this fire. It is you who have made this grass-grazing animal a friend of our master. Damanak said, It is true. The fault is mine, not Pinglak's. But just as I had made them their friends, now I will make them break their friendship as well. Kartak said, But Sanjivak, despite being a bull, is a very intelligent creature. On the other hand, Sing Pinglak is also terrible. It is true that your intelligence is sharp, yet how will you be able to separate these two now? Damanak said, Brother, despite being incapable, the work which cannot be completed by bravery can also be completed by clever people with tact. Just as the crow had killed the poisonous black snake with the help of a golden thread, Kartak asked, How did that happen? Damanak started saying, <laughs>